Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have some rain warnings in force over the course of the next 24 hours as we have quite a very unsettled stormy middle of the week with big low pressure systems in moving in gusty winds very heavy torrential rain falling on relatively saturated ground already so have a look at that on the UKV as well and it's also turning considerably cooler generally back towards average but we've been so much above average for the last sort of week or two that it's going to feel quite cold out there temperatures will be back down sort of the mid to uh, mid to high single digits in the day potentially for some and overnight we could even see areas uh, many areas touching on freezing by the end of the week again not too unusual for this time of year but it will be a shock to the system after the very mild uh, sort of recent times we'll also then go have a look at the gfs gm ESMWF, and the ensembles to keep you up to date on what's happening with the mid to longer range we've still got scandinavian blocking looking like it's a feature but once again not doing anything significant today uh, still is the end of november to early december where there's the potential for it to take more of an influence um, the only thing it is doing is slowing down the jet stream and sort of halting these low pressures over the top of us so it could mean we actually get very unsettled and stormy for a time uh, like we are seeing this week but the continued trend of that sky is even higher or at least higher pressure blocking to our east to remain there um, for the foreseeable future and even the GEM today just starts bringing a very interesting pattern where it does try and pull in easterly winds and a cold air mass for the UK uh, and actually does pull it off for Scotland uh, with low pressure running into it and there you can sort of get a marginal snow event so that is something we also do need to keep an eye on in the medium range so have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description now on the live radar most areas are pretty dry at the moment um this rain band has been moving eastwards and it is dissipating as it does um, but we've got the main band of rain moving in tomorrow at least the early hours of tomorrow throughout the day potentially clearing eastwards uh for, for lunchtime but uh yeah it's going to be real heavy rain tomorrow. We've got yellow rain warnings in force for it. Uh, again, the rain in itself is not ridiculous, but it's falling on already saturated grounds. So there could be flooding issues with that. Also, it's going to bring cooler air in over the course of the next couple of week, uh, couple of days. Sorry, uh, as we are pulling generally northwesterly air flows. Again, originally from the Atlantic, so it's getting moderated significantly, but the air is actually in, incoming from Greenland, so it is actually quite cold aloft. So if we do have a look at the temperatures as I'm recording this around midday, you can see that it is currently not too bad. A slice of yellow there showing that it is generally mild in some places, but we have had fog around. We did see a fog warning put in force um, overnight, um, but that's come to nothing really. Um, it, you know, it was in put in force around midnight and expired at 10 a.m. So I don't think many people actually saw it, um, but yeah, there was a fog warning in force for central areas as we do have uh, yeah, some thick fog around that's holding those temperatures down. But widely still, temperatures into the low to mid-teens today, but it will be turning considerably cooler over the course of the next few days, as I said. If you go over to the weather warnings, we've got a yellow rain warning across parts of eastern Scotland from midday tomorrow until 9pm. Heavy rain may lead to some flooding and travel disruption, 20-40mm likely widely, with as much as 50-60mm to 60 millimeters over the higher ground of Aberdeenshire, Angus, and Perth and Kinross. So you see high likelihood, lower end of the impact matrix, again, falling onto saturated ground, increases the chances of some flooding. We've got some rain warnings across parts of southern Wales and central, southern, and western parts of England. Heavy rain may lead to some flooding and disruption to travel. Band of rain will move east across southern parts of England and Wales during Tuesday morning. Some of the rain will be heavy with 50 to 30 millimetres falling quite widely and as much as 40 to 50 millimetres millimeter over parts of Dartmoor and south facing high ground of southern Wales and the marches and parts of southern England. High likelihood, again, higher end of the impact matrix. Again, that is quite a lot of rain in itself, but it's falling onto the saturated ground, which is the biggest issue with that so yeah if you are in those areas tomorrow do keep an eye out the warning does expire at 1 p.m so hopefully it doesn't impact most of the day but at least the morning there could be some issues 
If we do go over to the UKV now and have a look at what the precipitation and the temperature is doing over the course of the next five days. Again, you can see that rain band moving in at the moment, uh, dissipating as it does. But we've got this secondary rain band, a uh, big weather front, cold front sweeping in, very heavy torrential rain through tomorrow. You can see it returns real heavy around rush hour in central southern England. Uh, as it spreads eastwards and around lunchtime it does slowly clear eastwards out into the north sea so most areas should start to be turning drier but it should linger across parts of northern and eastern scotland and then we just see showers pack in behind and you just go into an unsettled westerly flow there's a little bit of snow over the high ground of scotland there as cold air wraps in and generally just stays really quite unsettled through wednesday maybe some dry spells at times but again more heavy rain pushing in that continues through into Thursday and then again all the way through Friday. Still a lot of showers around. And yes, not big significant rain bands all the time, but risk of heavy showers and blustery conditions quite likely as well. And you can see that having the wind gusts again. Again, it's not going to be ridiculous, but you can see whenever the rain band moves in, 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts, squally winds, and especially short coastal areas like you see 30, 40 mile per hour gusts quite consistently. And again, Nothing ridiculous, but still very strong gusty winds at times where the rain bands move through. If we finish by having a look at the uh, two meter temperatures again today, maybe peaking around 14, 15 degrees. Other areas only 9 or 10 into tomorrow. Those temperatures uh, could only rise to maybe 13, maybe max 14, but widely again, sort of 8 to 12 degrees, quite chilly, widely. And into Wednesday, once again, maybe only single digits overnight, so quite cold, or at least colder than uh, recent times. And then Wednesday, only 11 or 12 degrees in the day, so turning much chilly, chillier. And then into Thursday again, maybe 10 to 12 degrees, cooling down significantly once again. And overnight into Friday, you can see quite cold overnight, mid single digits, and Friday in the day, really struggling to get above single digits. Again, that is generally average for this time of year, but consider considering what we've had recently, it is going to feel pretty cold. And overnight into Saturday, look at that temperature is widely dropping towards the freezing mark. So it could be doing very cold towards the weekend overnight, that is. Again, Nothing unusual, but compared to what we've had recently where double-digit uh, temperatures overnight have been quite apparent, um, it will be feeling considerably colder, if, especially if you're staying out late at night or getting up early in the morning. Now, if we do have a look at the GFS and see what that is showing over the next couple of weeks, have a look at the mid to longer range. You can see the high pressure building up towards Skazi at the moment. Low pressure running in. And you can see the high pressure tries to pull in easterly winds, but what it actually does is just halts the low pressure, keeping us very unsettled and quite stormy this week, generally, as you saw by the UKP. Blustery winds, loads of bouts of heavy rain, uh, and a lot of showers as well. That continues into the weekend, uh, and we do still see that scan even high, and it stays very unsettled into the longer term. Big lows potentially pushing in, but we still see that blocking up towards Scandinavia, even at 384 hours. Look at that towards Svalbard and Scandinavia, big high pressure systems. Again, cold air wrapping around it potentially there. Uh, and again, the best way to view this is over the Northern Hemisphere view. You see significant blocking towards this side of the pole. So, you know, we'll have to keep an eye on it in the longer term. It could actually just come to nothing. But the chances are that it does pull off something colder or a little bit more blocked in the longer term. Uh, again, we just have to see how it does impact the jet stream towards the end of the month into the start of December. But for the time being, yes, Scandinavian blocking is there. Yes, it will be taking uh, being well, being a factor in our weather. But the most considerable thing uh, that we have to look at is the low pressure running in from the west. Could be very unsettled and potentially quite stormy at times. If you do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. Again, the high pressure building up towards Scandinavia at the moment, trying to pull in easterly winds. Low pressure running into that, continue to stay very unsettled. But watch this right at day 10. Very unsettled, stormy low, runs in from the south. But we are actually putting quite a cold easterly wind in. Look across Scotland, the minus 5 isotherm is involved there. Minus 10 just across the North Sea in Scandinavia. A big warm low pressure system budging in. So, yeah, very, very interesting seeing that. Again, if we get into the United Kingdom, look, very cold air across Scotland. You put in the two meter temperatures, freezing, freezing dew points. And you look at that, and you'd see snow potentially over the higher ground. Uh, and again, potentially there would be some significant snowfall as those weather fronts bump into that cold air. So, there's potential there in the long term, one of these sort of very 
small localised snow events is possible with this Scandinavian high cold air trying to get pushed in from the east. Again, as though it is something to keep an eye on. Uh, it's not guaranteed. Not DFS wasn't showing it really, uh, but it is just an interesting thing that we could see coming up if we did see the jet stream running slightly to the south, easily winds trying to budge in the Scandinavian high a little bit stronger than initially thought. That's when we could see things really start to spice up. But for the time being, general unsettled average sort of or slightly colder than average sort of conditions look the most likely if you go for the ecmwf see how that does compare again westerly winds moving at the moment but the even high trying to pull easterly winds in a bit of the battleground but the sort of the dividing line between low pressure and sort of average westerly winds against the cold easterlies are forming over parts of Germany, Denmark and Scandinavia, so well to our east, so we're not really going to be impacted by the cold air too much, but we could see low dew points and dry, coolish air move in, which could mean it goes drier and frostier for a time and if we do have a break from the lower pressures. Beyond that though, look at the big low pressure systems staying very unsettled and really quite stormy in the long term. Uh, again, still got this Scandinavian high, this big high pressure system trying to push up towards Siberia, Scandinavia, up towards Svalbard. Uh, but for the UK, you can just see it's under these deep blues, deep low pressure systems, keeping us very unsettled uh, and yet quite rainy and stormy. Jet stream pushed to our south. Look at the upper air temperatures. Yes, there'll be brief milder air masses pushing it, but the majority of the North Atlantic is filled by coolish air uh, and the temperature deviation. You can see that we would probably be for quite a period average to below average again some warmer sectors sweeping through at times but whenever we see the warmer sectors we must remember it's normally associated with rain so towards the surface it doesn't actually increase the temperatures uh, because of the rain and cloud and wind so yeah whenever we do see the above average, above average upper air temperatures it probably won't actually feel above average at all so feel quite considerably uh, or feel quite average to below average if we finish by having a look at the ensemble members, if we do put on the age of the HPA temperature of precipitation, you can see generally we're average to below average, maybe just peaking above average at times, but remaining very unsettled uh, all the way to the end of the month. So you see it is one of the most average sort of GFS ensemble charts I've seen where it hardly deviates from average by a degree or so. Um, big unsettled patches as well with big precipitation spikes. Uh, so yeah, looking really, really unsettled and probably quite cool as well. The precipitation will bring those temperatures down so yeah we won't feel particularly pleasant again put on the dew points you can see generally at times dropping close towards freezing so it's quite cold dry air most likely in from the north or the east so we are going to see cold air masses at times and again you put on the two meter temperatures you can see most of the next like week or two temperatures will be peaking around that eight to ten degrees dropping as low as three to six degrees overnight uh, and it could be colder than that at times so we do see a bit of a frost maybe later this week and into saturday as the ukv showed again the ensemble members don't always pick up on that too well because a lot of radiation is involved um, and sometimes uh, the sort of mid longer range models the ensemble members forecast five degrees when it's actually one degree so that is something we have to take into account but of course we'll keep you updated updated on that with the uk V charts. If you finish by trying to look at the ECMWF ensembles, it does look like they have updated today. Uh, and again, they're very similar to the GFS, generally around average with high amounts of precipitation. So yeah, staying very unsettled, generally average, uh, and even when it's above average, the, the unsettled weather is probably going to make it feel quite cold. So yeah, not particularly pleasant next couple of weeks, but definitely more seasonable, definitely cooler, and yeah, quite unsettled and stormy, but still all eyes have to be kept on that Scandinavian high uh, and see what happens with that over the course of the next few weeks as we head into meteorological winter uh, in the next sort of two and a half weeks or so. So exciting times, see what's happening uh, as we head into December. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.